In this tutorial, I want to just give a brief uh, introduction and walk through some of the features of Canva.com, which you can use for putting together your policy briefs if you'd like. It's, it's an option that is free. Um, it's really a design platform um, meant for designing all sorts of things, as that shows here, like a presentation, poster, banner, uh, social media posts, that sort of thing, flyers, etc. It's got lots of different options, which we'll go into a little bit, but it's totally free. Just go to canva.com and then you can click on the sign up button um, and uh, you can either sign up with Google, Facebook, or just an email uh, address. And uh, with that, I'm going to go into, once you log in to Canva, um, again, you can see more of what is available to you in terms of the designs. And there's lots and lots of different options uh, available to you. Uh, there on the left hand side, you've got templates, photos, um, other things that we're not really going to go into, but lots of options available. And with the free version of Canva, you still have access to a lot of stuff. Um, so you don't need to pay anything to be able to access most things. And so when you're ready to actually start creating something, you'll just click on create a design. And then it gives uh, a bunch of different options, all these different design options down here. For a policy brief, um, you're probably going to want to pick report, proposal, or newsletter. Those are going to be the ones that are going to give you the best options. I think report is probably the best, most appropriate for a policy brief, but any of those three will give you some templates that might be useful. Once you actually go into a, a new document, once you click on one of those templates, um, you'll see a page that looks like this. This is where you're actually going to do all of your design. Um, and it's got a menu bar at the top. Um, and then over on the left hand side, it's got an, uh, a set of all the tools that you have available to you, um, templates, photos, etc. And um, you want to make sure that this is the right size. So when you, um, you know, either for printing or for turning in, um, want to make sure it's US letter. First thing I want to show you is templates. Templates are just pre-designed uh, elements that are ready for you to just edit. Now there's all sorts of ones. Again, I chose the report document, um, report design. So I've got, it says annual report, daily report, monthly report. And as I keep scrolling down, I'll get this all results and these they'll just be listed a whole bunch of them. So a couple things that I want you to notice. One is when you mouse over, uh, a template, it will show you how many pages it has in the bottom right hand corner. So this is one of three and it'll actually show you a little brief preview of each of those pages. Um, some pages only have one so it won't show anything in that corner or sometimes it'll say free but that just means there's just one page. Um, so again I'm going to look for, a lot of these have three pages. Three pages may be plenty for what you need for the policy brief because you can actually repeat uh, one of these pages if you need, or you can edit it, you can duplicate it, etc. Um, I'm going to come down and find some that have a little bit more. So there's a couple here that have more. So I'm going to pick this one that has 10 pages. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Now this will show me each page in the template. And I can look down, I can see if there's only one that I like that I want to use. I can click on that and it will actually apply it to the current page that I'm looking at. So boom, that one's been applied. If I want to apply all of them, and then I can just edit that later, I click on apply all 10 pages right above uh, those all of the template options. And then as I start to scroll down here, I'm gonna see all 10 pages that were added in. And again, every single element in here is editable. Um, I can make changes to it, I can change out uh, images and things like that, which you're going to want to change some of those images anyways, and I'll show that in just a minute. Now, let's say I wanted to combine a couple of these. Um, maybe I really like the design of some of these pages, but I want a different cover page. I don't love this cover page. So maybe I want something just really simple for my cover page. Maybe I really like this social media report cover page. Well, what I can do when I'm on page one, when I'm looking at page one, I can just click on this. It will replace all of those elements with a new page. Or uh, I can click on the plus button, which adds a new page in between um, or right after the page that I clicked it on. 
Um, and I could, like again, I'll go back and pick a different one like this one. Uh, and so now that was a blank page. That way I can keep this one. Maybe I want to kind of decide between a couple if I want, whatever. Um, if I don't like it, then I can just hit delete. Now, the nice thing about the templates is, again, they are all uh, designed to look and go well together. So that may be something that you want to consider. Now, as I scroll down, you'll notice some of these uh, images have this uh, kind of grid structure on it and it says Canva watermark on there. When you go to download this, when you're all done, it will actually tell you that there are some images in here that are not free, that those cost money. Now, this is probably fine because you're gonna probably replace all of these with your own photos. But if you uh, don't have all of your own photos, but you can come over here to these photos se section and search through some of these different photos and find something that might be useful, and you can click and drag that in. Um, and then that is one less image that you have to worry about. So now it'll say four premium images, but notice each one of these. So like I can drag this over, I can replace each of these images that uh, have that little grid structure on it. Let's see what other ones we have. I'm just gonna drag in some of these free ones that I know uh, I've used in the past. So and here's a couple more right there. Drag this one in and drag this one in. And so now when I go to download, all of those should be gone, yeah. So now it would be free, you wouldn't have to pay anything for it. So just keep that in mind that a lot of these use, a lot of these templates use some paid elements, but you can always replace them with free elements. So that's a brief overview of the templates. And again, you can go in and edit any of these, which I'll talk more about um, a little bit later in the video. In this video, I'm gonna talk about images and how you can manipulate the images. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Any image, um, again, if you're working off of a template or uh, even if you're just creating a new page, um, the, to, to add an image to the page, you just go over to your photos or your elements or uploads. Those are all different uh, options available to you to kind of drag stuff in. So I can do a search here for, um, I, did a, I did a search for lunchroom and I wanna show you what uh, you have available. So there are some that could be useful. The problem is, is that these are all paid options. So if you see the dollar sign in the corner or the Canva Pro icon, then that means those are paid options. Um, and it doesn't give a good way to kind of filter for just free options. So you might not be able to find something that quite fits in the free option. Um, so I, you know, different search like cafeteria, and it'll give you options up here of like, oh, here are some other searches that might be similar. So I found one here. This is not really what a cafeteria in a school looks like, but you know, it might work. So I can click and drag it into my document or I can just click it and it will add it in um, and then I can move it around and whatever now in terms of moving the image around obviously you can just click and drag that within the page it also has the resize options available if you want to keep it proportional keep that same um, then you just click and drag from the corners you can just kind of click and drag however you want same with tops and bottoms um, you can rotate the image a little bit if you'd like uh, from that bottom section. And you have some other things up here that I'm not really gonna go into, but you can kind of play with those if, if you think that's uh, worth your time. So the main thing is um, positioning the image to make sure that it's not on top of text. If it does happen to be um, on top of text or text you can't see very well, uh, so for example, I can go bring to front real quick. So if it's covering up some of my text, then just right click on the image and you can go send it back or send backward uh, and that will, uh, and then you can just move it to position it however you want. That's just a really quick overview. If you need to upload your own image, you can just go to uploads, click on upload an image or video, um, and then find your JPEG or PNG or whatever file uh, you have. Um, and I've got one here, so I'm just gonna click on it and it should pop in in just a second. No, it's not wanting to go. There we go. So here's one. Um, this is from a, this is just from an article that I read. So I'm gonna kind of put this, maybe I want this to be, um, you know, a, a main portion of my page here. I can kind of 
position that like that. Um, and so you can bring in any image you want. You also could click and drag that onto uh, an existing image like we did before. For this video, I want to show you graphs and how to manipulate um, graphs and uh, other kind of charts in Canva. So this template had a graph um, already in here and a pie chart and, and some other things. So if you click on uh, that template, you get some options as to like color schemes and things like that. So I can just change the color and it can do that. I've got some options as to the size of uh, the fonts and stuff down there. I'm going to change that back to eight. I think it was eight and a half actually. So I've got a few different options there, but if I want to edit it, usually you can double click or sometimes you can just click once, but that will bring you into this bar chart. Uh, um, and you've got different options, donut chart, pie chart, line chart, row chart, bar chart. And these are all the different rows. So I could add a row if I wanted. Um, yeah, just item seven and I, maybe this one is 100. Um, and so now I've got, oops, let's delete that. So it takes it away. And so I can add uh, additional elements to it if I want. I can delete some elements by just deleting the... Uh, options in there and it will automatically take that out. Um, so any of these numbers that I want to change, I can just change and it takes just a second to update. So same with this one. Let's say I wanted to add another month. Uh, if I wanted to add July to this and July got 10, I don't even know what it's talking about right now, but okay, these are percentages, I guess. Uh, oh, it's showing it in percentages. I see what's going on. Um, and again, we can, let's uh, zoom into this a little bit so we can kind of see these images just a little bit better. So I can edit any of these just by clicking on them. Um, or like I said, if, if it's not showing up, then just double click and you should get the option here. If I want to change this pie chart to a donut chart instead, I can just click right there and just change that chart. If I want to add a new chart to my list, um, like say, this uh, line chart wasn't here. Um, I can actually come into my elements, just do a search for chart, or you can scroll down. Sometimes it's it takes a while to find, uh, you know, the charts and things uh, in here. So um, let's see, I just saw them charts. Yeah, so I can go to see all. Uh, so I can just choose one of these. It's going to be typically these top ones. There are some more advanced ones down here, but they do cost money. So again, I'm talking about the free ones in this particular version. So I can click on this. It uh, automatically populates a line chart here. Um, now I need to zoom out a little bit so I can see that chart because maybe because I, I want it to fit down in here. Again, I can edit uh, any of these options. Um, and then I can just change these numbers to be whatever it is that I want them to be so that it makes sense. Uh, you'll probably need to add some, like some sort of uh, header or something to make sure that we understand what this chart is about. But this is how you can add charts. You also, if you don't want to use this tool, um, as I showed earlier in the video, you actually could create it somewhere else, save it as a JPEG file um, or a PNG file or some, some image file and you could upload it yourself uh, into here and just drag it in. But this gives you at least the option of um, editing on the fly uh, depending on the numbers that you got and, and things like that. And you can even change it to be different kinds of charts. Uh, so any similar to an image, you can just um, drag it around to uh, change the size and, and things like that. Again, uh, if I want to change any of these colors, I can just come in here and change colors uh, to, this is the text color, so if I wanted it to be uh, gray or red or whatever, I can come in and change those things and uh, play with these different options that are available. So that's a brief overview of charts, which again are under elements and charts. Uh, if I want to edit it, just kind of double click on it and it'll populate up here. Uh, to be able to make some edits. In this section, I want to spend some time talking about text because the bulk of your policy brief is going to be text of some kind. Now, the template that I had originally chosen for this uh, 
this tutorial video didn't have a lot of text options available. So I actually went back to uh, this one that I had done for the um, for the title page and just brought in uh, one of their options. It has This one has a lot more text available to it, the social media report one. And again, you're gonna wanna look through the templates and, and find some that, that kind of match what you want. Um, but I found one that had the most text on the page because this is probably gonna be more what you're looking at. Um, let me go ahead and make this, uh, whoops, fill the page here so we can kind of see a little bit closer what's going on. So and this looks, you know, this looks really good. Let me show you what you can do with the text and some of the kind of quirks with Canva. So one is if you want to change the font of something, you end up changing the font for the entire section. Um, so like if I if I click on Libra Baskerville, so that's going to change it for this entire section. Even if I select uh, just one portion of this it makes the whole paragraph go that way. So like it, it's something to keep in mind that you can't change the font for just one thing. Um, most of the time you're not gonna wanna do that, but you may want to for certain things. You can bold just certain words if you want or a section of words or underline or italicize. So that is uh, something that's helpful. If you wanna change an entire block, you can just uh, just click on it once so that there's no, you don't want the cursor inside of it. Um, and you can change the, the whole block to be a certain uh, font. And that's, again, click right here and then this shows you the list of fonts available. Again, you'll notice some of these are um, paid options. So you're gonna wanna stick to the ones that are, of course are free, but there's lots of options there. So with text, this, this Canva is really meant to be a design piece of software. It's not really meant to be a word processor like Word is or Notes or Evernote or Pages or whatever other program you might be using to type up your uh, policy brief. So you're gonna wanna do that in actually a separate program. And then you're probably gonna wanna copy and paste into here. Now, if you're gonna copy and paste into a template, keep in mind that this side of the text is separate from this. So for example, if I were to, I'm gonna copy and paste this whole thing again. I wanna just make this longer. So if I hit enter and paste this again, all it does is make that part longer. It doesn't connect to this second column. Let me go back to fit real quick. So it's not going to, it's not gonna do what you would expect it to do in, in Word, for example, where it would automatically start populating on the other side. That is where Canva can get really frustrating for a policy brief is in dealing with text. You're gonna to wanna to copy and paste in shorter segments, or you're gonna to wanna to find a template um, that's maybe more like, here, let's hit plus and uh, add something like this in, you know, something more like this where there's a lot of body text and then you can just kind of manually choose what moves to the next page or not. Again, that's one of the downfalls of Canva. There's tons of other great features of it, but it doesn't deal with text very well in terms of um, word processing. So if you have a long document with lots of text, it's best to write that somewhere else and copy and paste it in small chunks. The text part is gonna take a little bit longer to kind of piece together. So um, you can make any of your normal changes that you would do up here, um, but just keep that in mind. If you wanna add in other little uh, fun elements um, or uh, other text options that I just want you to be aware of, I mentioned this earlier in the video, but there are sometimes some really cool, well-designed, like if there's a quote from somebody that you wanna put in, this might be a good one to uh, use for a nice little quote. And again, you can resize this. Um, you, you can, there are some ways that you can edit these, uh, these nice little pre-designed text pieces. So if I click off of it and then I can I don't know, drag this somewhere where maybe I would, maybe if I wanted this like right here, then actually I'd probably need to delete some of this down below so that it's not on top of it. So same here, just trying to give you an idea of what this might 
look like. I'm gonna have to edit that piece. Notice how I had to delete some of those pieces of this text in order for this to kind of not be overlapped by that. So these are all uh, just quirks to be aware of when dealing with text in Canva. Um, if it's getting frustrating, then I would suggest going with something that looks more like this, that tip, more typical of what we might see instead of doing the um, two column design, because again, those columns aren't connected together. Those are separate pieces of text. You can also totally design this on your own. If you will say, you can say a little bit of body text and you can actually just copy and paste in. So this is the, what was written up above then I can edit this, I can make this bigger or smaller. Um, I can decide not to make it centered. You know, just click on that to change the different alignment options. Um, again, you can play around with this, but just be aware that text is one of the uh, more frustrating features of Canva, just because it's more meant for designing everything and not necessarily typing in text. For this part, I wanna talk about how to align and distribute some of the elements in your designs in Canva to make them look a little bit neater. So sometimes if you're editing, um, you might drag things on top of each other. Um, and maybe for some reason, I want this image actually on top instead of behind. I mean, I think it looks better behind, but just as an example, I can right click on it and you'll notice I have send to back, send backward, bring forward, bring to front. These are just options telling you where in the layers do you want this image to be. So if I want this to be all the way on the front, I can drag it all the way to the front. Now that actually covered up my page down here, so maybe I wanna bring now this to the front. Uh, oh, except for that, caused problems with that. I can actually select multiple items by holding down Shift um, and selecting multiple items. So maybe I bring those back to the front, but now it's in front of this, uh, this image is now in front of the orange bar. Maybe that's what I want. So if I don't like it, I can just right click on it again and go send to back. So those are different options uh, available to you. Again, you can, I can do that with any of these. If I wanna send that to back for some reason, I can do that or I can bring it back to the front. So that's pretty straightforward. The other one that is really nice, um, especially for aligning up your objects. So. It does have some alignment. Let me go to fill the page so we can see this a little bit clearer. Notice how it's trying to align with something. It's, it's, it's showing up these little purple, uh, pinkish purple bars. Um, it's telling me that it's, it's aligning with something. Well, if I'm not sure exactly what it's aligned with, I actually can go ahead and select all of these um, elements here and up in the top right corner, I have this position option. Now position will say, okay, how do I want to align these elements? Do I want them to be aligned in the middle? Do I want them to be aligned, you know, et cetera. I've got different options available to me. Now these are a little bit weird because they're grouped. Um, there are actually two elements in one element. So that can sometimes throw things off a little bit. But let me move this over so I can kind of give you a better look of some of these other options that I have available. So like, let's say I want them all to be aligned to the left-hand side. I just click on that and boom, that drags that 23%, this top one over. Um, and it's always going to choose the element. If I go now to left, it's always gonna choose the elements that, that is to the farthest left. Um, and if I choose center, again, I think you get the idea here. It's gonna line those up kind of in between uh, everything. I can just click and drag this back. But these are this is really nice for trying to make sure that all of your images are, are all of your elements are aligned together. Now the other thing is, what if this one's like clear up here and this one's up here, but this one, there's this kind of this big gap. Let me zoom out again. That looks kind of funny. There's this larger gap here. So I can do the same thing. I can select these, I can go to position and I have this space evenly and I can space evenly vertically or horizontally. Again, horizontally works if it's a horizontal set, but this is a vertical set. So I'm gonna click on that. And it's basically just gonna move the 55% to be exactly in between 23 and 22%. 
So now these spaces are more even. Now I think this 23 is too far up, so I'm gonna drag it down again. I can select these, position, vertical, just moves everything back. Now it looks like these got out of alignment just a little bit. So I'm gonna just do left to make sure that they're all set. Maybe I can drag them back over. Anyways, these are just some of the features that might be useful. So you could do that with images and text. You can do that with any element that you have. Um, if you wanna make sure that it's aligning, you can just select multiple images by holding down shift and clicking on those, uh, or those elements and then go to position and it'll show you the options that are available. This is already spaced evenly and it's already um, aligned, both left, center, and right because these are exactly the same sizes. So uh, that's just kind of a brief overview of aligning um, as well as the sending forward and backward. And finally, to wrap up the video, I'm gonna show you how you can download the entirety of your document uh, to your computer to be able to turn in or print or whatever you need to do with it. So here's my full document. Again, your policy brief shouldn't look like mine because this would get an F. But uh, once you're done designing everything, getting all of your text and, and images and uh, you know if there's any graphs or numbers or call outs or things like that that you wanna add into there, once everything's totally done, um, you, can, you can change the name of it right here. It's not a huge deal, but just something to keep in mind. And then you're gonna click on download. Now, there are a couple options here. Usually you just want the PDF print that gives you the highest quality option. A PNG and a JPEG will not work for your policy brief. You're gonna to need to do at least a PDF, but you, you're gonna to want to do the PDF print because it's the highest quality option available to you. So you click on that. Um, you don't need to do crop marks and bleed. This says what pages, if you wanted to just select certain pages, if you added an extra page that you didn't need for some reason, whatever, then you click download. And really that's pretty much all there is to it. It's, uh, it will prepare your design, it'll take a second, and then it will say, go ahead, where do you wanna save it? Um, it's just compiling everything into a PDF for you. Uh, it usually takes just a minute. Um, don't need to worry about uh, these other images that come up. This is where the name comes in handy if you, if you change the name to be, uh, you know, it's just gonna take whatever the name you had there and then put a PDF at the end of it. But then you go ahead and hit save. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up just so you can see the final product. So, there we go, it looks really nice and clean, and Canva, again, does a really, really good job of uh, putting these things together. Um, looks really nice, um, and you know all of, all of the elements are there. So that is how you finalize that uh, to be ready to turn in. Um, again, you can rewatch any of the sections that you need, um, and I have included uh, timestamps for each of the sections in the description uh, of the video itself so that you can see where to go if you're looking for information on how to do text or how to do graphics and other things.